prostitution was very different then, right? Um, I think it was run out of like the backs of newspapers or I'm not sure. I mean, what were the usual mediums? But I want to get into the Mustang Ranch. Well, you know, and fortunately, it, I had spent a year as a vice detective. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I had great knowledge of how prostitutes work, uh, how their lifestyle, what they do, their johns, everybody. I saw how the system of prostitution worked. And so that really helped me in this investigation with her. But at the time, you know, word of mouth, escort services that you would find in the back of magazines or newspapers, you know, escort this, escort that. Uh, but a lot of it was by word of mouth. You know, um, you'd have one person in escort and then invite another person in. And that's what happened in her case. OK. And then so she decided to up that game, though. Yes. And she went to the place that we all knew at that time was the the um, Taj Mahal of, of prostitution. And that was the Mustang Ranch out in Nevada where yeah. it was legal. Yeah. Um, so it was run by a reputed mobster. I don't know if it's true or not. You you probably know Joe Conforti. Joe Conforti. And um, he was the man. He ran the Mustang Ranch. People of that ilk went from near and far to the Mustang Ranch to seek out uh, uh, legal prostitution. Right. Uh, and under the guise, uh, under the watchful eyes of Joe Conforti, the reputed mobster. What happened to her at the Mustang Ranch? How did that go? Well, at Mustang Ranch, uh, she, from what we had learned, that she didn't really get along with a lot of the other girls. Um, she excelled. She started to excel. She started to get more people. In fact, people coming in were asking for her. And I think it kind of, you know, uh, uh, kind of upset the other girls. Because she's she 19. Was, she's, yeah, she was eight, probably 18, 18 19. And she was bringing in a lot of people and they wanted to come and see her. I mean, the the astonishing thing is that during my investigation, I found a lot of business cards and a lot of people were contacted in places like San Francisco and places south. And they had all been to Mustang Ranch and that's where they met her. It was just, it was amazing. And she kept those, like she, she it's like marketing, right? She would right. keep their names, follow up. Right, yeah, she could call, make phone mm -hmm. calls and uh, she kept this ledger and had everybody's name in it. And then she put comments that I, I won't talk about, but she put comments about each, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, get together with them. But, um, you know, I wow. thought, wow, she went that far. Most prostitutes mm -hmm. that I had learned, hey, you see a John, you get your money, bye-bye. But not with her. She yeah. was, she, like I said, she considered herself a businesswoman. And this was just part of it, you know, how she was doing it. And she was getting good at it. And I think at Mustang Ranch, uh, the other girls were, not not really happy with her because she was making a lot of money. And she rose up fast. You have this amazing picture, and we're going to have the picture on the YouTube version, um, of her sitting in a booth. And in the middle, you have the mobster Joe Conforte. You see, this is something I never knew. I don't think anybody knew this stuff. Yeah. Um, you have the mobster Joe Conforte, owner of the Mustang Ranch, and on his right-hand side is the Batgirl. Yeah. She's right there. When we were up there, we were told by her... Uh, former roommates that um, Michelle was his number one girl. And uh, I thought, wow, that says a lot when you're because number one, she was making money. And uh, of course, when she made money, the ranch made money. So she was a number one girl. So, yeah, when he was out on the town, which I don't think was that much, mm -hmm. uh, she was on his arm. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, we were fortunate to find that photograph that was given to us. Uh, who was someone that had it. It was given to us on the photograph of her, uh, one of the other girls. And uh, in fact, it was a number two girl uh, who after Michelle, we found out moved up to number one. So that's how it kind of worked. You know? So uh, Doggy dog. yeah, that's what it was. I mean, that's how it is in that business. And of course, through the other people working at Mustang, the other girls, I mean, uh, there is no honor among them. They, they, they told us everything. They kept nothing back. And so whatever she was doing, whatever she would say, we learned about it very quickly. So, yeah, there was some angst there among mm -hmm. the other girls because she was the draw.